one of the caveats that I do have some personal information uh, that I did get personally involved in was some information that had to do with the Stargates and Looking Glass, and more specifically the 2012 problem with those projects. The popular opinion of what's out there right now is that the project was shut down because there was a problem when we approached 2012. I've heard it described a number of ways, but to my knowledge, the problem is, is that the timelines converge on that point in time. And when you know enough about the Stargate projects and the Looking Glass project to know how string theory works and how the possibility of possibilities works and how making one choice over here doesn't necessarily mean that the other choice couldn't exist at the same time. But once you get your brain wrapped around this subject, you find out that at the end of 2012, in an easy way to put it, uh, the choices that we make become less and less consequential to the future. And eventually we're pushed into this bottleneck of time, no matter which choice we make. And that's important to the people that had access to Looking Glass because they would use Looking Glass knowing the choices that they would make and the future would pop up. The big mistake was coming up with the possibility of future. And when we started using a computer to say, well, if we make this choice, it's 79% possible that this scenario happens, and 23% are possible, or whatever, you know, using round numbers, that this scenario would happen. The understanding at the time was that was realistic. However, if you go down the road further and free will continues to exercise itself on this game, that 79% possibility sometimes changes very, very fast. But if you look at the situation in a point of time, it seems very realistic that that's the greatest possibility. What happened was people, very smart people, began to figure out that something big was coming up. Something that made it so all the possibilities of all the future scenarios of any choice any possibility that was fed in and observed through the looking glass inherently ended up in the same future. And no decision, no possibility changed past a certain point. That's the big secret. All possible timelines lead to the same basic set of history, in the future. That is what sends everybody that has all of the information, that knows everything, into a blind panic. The people that know everything about Looking Glass, that have gotten all the reports and all the information, the elites of the world, probably figured out that that was the end of the game. And nothing could be manipulated beyond that point. When I was in the military, it would have been before 97 when I got in trouble, one of my particular areas that I was amazingly intuitive about is problem solving slash mission planning, or um, more specifically, taking a bad mission and fixing it. Certainly knowing how string theory and possible futures works makes it so you can work your mind very quickly to see the reality of what's happening and decide what decisions need to be made to change it for a particular outcome. At a certain point after they're done hearing the computer tell them this is what's going to happen over and over and over and over again, all they become focused on is how do we fix it? 
What I do know is that I was called in and asked to solve this problem, this timeline contraction problem. And I eventually did my due diligence and did all the investigating and basically only had one piece of information, and that was reinforcement. The computer's right. The timelines will contract down to some inevitable thing. There is an inevitable event. It's been forecast, it's been predicted, it's been fed to us in a slop trough of what they want us to believe will happen. They don't actually have control over what happens. They only have control over the reaction, and it seems that no matter what they try to do to cause their desired reaction, it's going to have an opposite effect much, much easier for me to explain today what that process is as opposed to back then. If I had to give it a name, I would say it's the awakening process. It's an evolution of consciousness that cannot, will not, and no matter what decisions or possibilities are injected into the equation, eventually it all results down to us all learning the truth and becoming aware of this massive dam of lies that has been built that keep us from knowing massive volume of information that we should otherwise possess. Essentially what happened with Looking Glass, not only did they not want people to use it anymore because they knew it was just going to burp out the same thing, uh, but at the same time they didn't want anybody else to know what it was saying. I'm sure. Because that information was a monumental concern when I was in the military about how to prevent this inevitability. Now, at first I thought it was end of the world. Now I see end of the world as end of their world. The biggest cherry on top of all this conversation um, would be a synopsis to say that I could convince everybody out there that for all intents and purposes what we believe to be true eventually becomes true. If somebody convinces us that a major disaster is going to happen in the very near future, a major disaster happens in the very near future. If we don't buy into that fear and accept that there's really nothing that we know know is going to happen and accept of whatever happens that makes the convergence of the timelines happen as naturally as possible. Any attempts to try to go away from this one inevitable conclusion I again see as a new beginning uh, an end of this reality, the beginning of something that we can't even possibly understand based on the level of our beliefs currently. But when all that information comes flooding out, there's going to be no denying what's true and what's a lie or what's illusion. Basically what we're experiencing right now is two master chess players sitting at the board and one of them looks down at the board and sees that he's in checkmate in seven moves. And he looks across at his opponent and he knows that his opponent sees it too, so there's no getting out of it. So at this point, the loser can only prolong the game. Both players know the game is over. It's only a matter of time before he does this and then you're forced to do this and then he's forced to do this and eventually checkmate. We, as a race, if we can understand that the game is over, that based on the rules of the game, the bad guys have already lost, the good guys have already won, yes, there's moves left on the table, but those moves are being forced by the player that is going to win. 
Um, the only way the checkmate can't happen is if the player that's winning makes a mistake. But from all the information that I've gathered, all of the information that's been given, all of the information that's been vetted to me, it seems pretty obvious that the good guy player on the side of the chessboard knows exactly what has to be done to win the game. And so, at this point, any mistake would be all but impossible. But again, you really have to understand the game to know that the guy that's losing is lost. And I'm sure most people sitting watching a chess match between two advanced chess players know the game's over long after the two players know it's over because they can't see the board and see that there's only seven moves left.